Hi guys, welcome back. So this is another video lecture for SHS Bio 02 or General Biology 2 for senior high school students. But for this specific video lecture, we will be learning more about Mendelian and modern genetics, as you can see on the screen. No? So uh, this is actually a lengthy topic. So again, I have decided to cut this into two parts in which on first part, this one right here, this is part one, we will be learning or we will be focusing on Mendelian genetics and on the later part or part two, in which I will be notifying you no, if ka na upload na nako ang video. So in that specific part, in that specific part, I'm sorry. Um, so in that specific part, we will be uh, focusing more on modern genetics. Okay, so... Now, so I would like to start my lecture with this quote right here. No? So it says that you are a unique individual because your genetic information is never identical to any other human on earth. Thus, you have to give importance to yourself because your uniqueness makes you special. Okay, so um, I would like you to be reminded that you are special in your own ways. You are unique in your own ways and uh, all your features, all your attributes are yours and yours only. I mean, nobody else can have it, okay? So, I mean, like, people like you, people are drawn to you because you have particular, um, you know, you have, you have these things in yourself that they could not find from anybody else, okay? And they like it about you, okay? So, kana, if there will be times that you feel down or you feel bad about yourself, so try not to, no? Please don't. Because I just want you to know that you are, I mean, God made you perfect. I mean, God created you in a very special manner. So, kana, just consider yourself uh, special because you actually are. Okay, so these are the targets or objectives that we have to achieve all throughout this video lecture. So, uh, again, this is a lengthy topic. So, tungan ako siya into two parts. So, for this specific part, we will just be learning about or we are going to achieve on how to predict the genotypes and phenotypes of mod of parents and their offspring using Mendel's laws of inheritance. So, the last uh, three objectives will be achieved or will be explained thoroughly on part two of this video. Okay, so when we talk about genetics, no, of course, again, mawala si genes, di ba? So, okay, basically, when you say genetics, it's the study of uh, genes. So, what are genes? These are the units of heredity composed of DNA molecules that are transferred from parent to offspring. Okay, so now uh, the, uh, a lot of people might actually be carrying this around with them, no? So, dili tanan na naasa inyo kay coded by your genes, okay? For example, there's no such gene that would code for homosexuality, okay? There's no such gene that would code for gender orientation. And by the way, gender and sex is different, ha? Huh? So, dapat you should know, dapat kabalo na mo anak. And there's no such gene that would um, code for particular personality traits, okay? If ISTJ baka or ESTJ or unsa pa to mga uban na personality traits, okay? Genes are actually very specific, okay? So, um, that's why gitawag sila nga units of heredity. Okay? When you talk about units, it has components, okay? So, it has specific components. And then, uh, one of the specific components are DNA molecules, which are carefully coded, which are carefully arranged in such a way that they are used to be translated into genes. Anna. And then, these are being transferred from parent to offspring. Okay? So, this is one of the main focus of this video lecture. We are going to learn uh, on how these genes are being passed on from generation to generation. Of course, following Mendelian genetics. So, all organisms have a set of genes inherited from the previous uh, generation. So, of course, asa pa man na magkika na ilang mga traits or ilang mga characters, di ba? Kika na giyapon sa ilang mga parents or sa ilang previous generation. Okay? Again, na dili lang siya, wala gingon da exclusive na gikan ng gil sa inyong mga parents. Because there are some genes that were passed on to you na gikan pa sa previous na generation. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now, genetics. It's the scientific study of genes and how they affect heredity and how genes are acquired and passed on from one generation to the next. Okay, so that's genetics. Now, I have here a picture of uh, mga monks. Yeah, uh, monks. I think these are Augustinian monks. 
So I want you, can you at least identify kung asa dia si Gregor Mendel? Because actually he will be the star of the show. No, he, we, we will be talking about him because he's the pioneering scientist when it comes to genetics. So can anybody identify? And here I am again, assuming na magpabag mo, considering that this is a pre-made video. But anyway, this is Gregor Mendel actually. So, you'd be able to identify him because he's holding a pea plant. I think that's a pea plant, ang yung kinahawiran. So, that's it. That's it. Now, we will be talking, we will be uh, continuing with his works, Gregor Mendel. Or in some references, ang yung complete name, we have Gregor. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. Johans? Johan? Johanny? Anyways, Mendel, ay agad kabalo na mo sa akong rule, akong rule, di ba? Importante ang spelling, okay? So, he's an Austrian monk, uh, Austria, so gika siya sa Austria, okay? Uh, teacher and biologist. And he discovered the basic principles of genetics through his guardian pea experiment. Now, uh, you might actually come across in some references that Mendelian genetics is also classified as uh, classical genetics. King ano man, sa iya mga good study, nagikan tanan basic principles when it comes to the study of genetics okay even modern genetics though na ay mga patterns of inheritance that could be explained by modern genetics and not by mendelian genetics but even so tanan basic concepts sa modern genetics kay gibasihan lang gyapon sa studies or sa gikan sa results sa pea plant experiment ni gregor mendel so hence he is also considered as the father of modern genetics so, his experiment on pea plants, do you know what pea plants are? Later on, I'll show you pictures. Kanang pea, green peas, kanang muncir ba? Oh, diba gikan man sa tanong? So, kana pea plants. So, from his experiment, uh, it led to the discovery that there are certain traits that follow particular patterns of inheritance from one generation to the next. So, this is actually very interesting. We will be um, learning or focusing more about this as we go through along the discussion. Okay? Now, um, from the studies or from the experiments of Mendel, he was able to uh, conceptualize these laws of inheritance. So, there are actually three. We have law of dominance, law of segregation, and law of independent assortment. Now, we will be talking more about this, some dihybrid cross. Okay, for this um, part here, we will be focusing more about uh, monohybrid cross lang sa. Okay? Now, why pea plants? Okay, by the way, this uh, is what? Pea plant, a pea plant looks like. So that's a that's a pod, and then ay mga peas inside or the seeds, and then these are uh, the flower colors. Actually, there are many flower colors already that exist. Na agad blue, na ay orange, but or na ay pink. But from the study of Mendel, from his experiments, he mainly used white and purple flowers because uh, mo daw niya ang pinaka common o kana contrasting traits good between other traits. So, of course, there are advantages why Mendel chose pea plants, no? So, aside, uh, I read this from one resource, no? Uh, he was able to gain access to study plants. It's because ang iya mga parents kay farmers man yun, no? So, that's why it's not hard for him to cultivate or to culture these plants. So, why pea plants? Because there are many varieties with distinct heritable features, or we call them characters, Okay? So, when you say distinct heritable features, kibale, if you try to breed these plants, ang yung mong makita ang uh, characters or traits or features could either be exactly the same with, I could be exactly the same either with the parents. Okay? So, you would know nga heritable siya. Okay? Kibali mapasa or mamana from one generation to the next. Now, we have two terms here. We have characters and traits. So, I would like you to remember the definition of this. Ha? When you say characters, this could be, um, these are distinct heritable features. So, this could be uh, such as flower color or masaba, a seed shape or seed color. More general. But when you talk about varieties of characters or character variants, we call them traits. So, for example, um, examples of traits are purple flower or white flower or yellow flower or green flower or orange flower. Diba? Kung imo i-compare sa character, mas specific siya. So, again, when you say characters, for example, when uh, for humans, when you say character, you say hair color. But when you say trait, you say 
blonde hair color or you say black hair color or you say brunette diba? or you say redhead okay so those are examples of traits kibali mas specific si traits from characters okay and of course mating can be controlled uh, this is one of the advantages of using peat plants for genetic study okay so each flower has sperm producing organs or stamens and an egg producing organ part so basically pea plants also have almost complete reproductive parts which is uh, easier for rigor mendel to actually do the breeding okay uh, to do the cross breeding so um cross pollination involves dusting one plant with pollen from another later on i'll be showing you pictures on how mendel used to do it okay now Let's proceed to the pea plant experiment. Now, this is actually how Mendel did it. No? So the first thing he did is uh, he got this purple flower and then no, a, a pea plant with a purple flower and then yung gi remove ang stamen kaya para ma-expose niya ang carpel. Okay? Kaya take note, the carpel, dara ba located, dara ba nakasulod ang egg or ang ovary. Okay? And then the next thing he did is he obtained another pea plant with a white flower with white flower rather, and yang gi transfer ang sperm, which is the pollen, uh, from the stamens of the white flower to the egg bearing carp uh, carpel of the purple flower. Okay, so yang gi brush off the gummy siya gummy nga brush, and then yang gi hulatan nga mahuma ng pollination until such time uh, the carpel would mature into a pod. So kana nga pod, kay ga bear siya mga seeds, and then muna yang gi gamit to be planted. Okay, now, later on, uh, sa iyang results, he found out that um, all of the hybrids ang um, outcome kay purple flowers. Okay, so, he also did uh, a reciprocal cross in which, kay di ba ganina, ayang gibuhat kay ang um, pollen, gikan sa white flower, ayang gibalhin sa carpel sa purple flower. So, when you talk about reciprocal cross, it's the other way around. So, kibali ang pollen na gikan sa purple flower, iyang gibalhin sa carpel sa white flower. Okay? So, he did reciprocal cross and then he still found out that most of the, all, all of the hybrids or offsprings ang nanggawas kay white ang color sa iyang flower. So, kaning mga hybrids, muna yung gitawag na first filial generation or F1 generation. Okay, so Mendel chose to track only those characters that occurred in two distinct alternative forms. So when you say two distinct alternative forms, for example, in his pea plant experiment, uh, ragin na ka flower color ang gigamit. It's either purple ragin na or it's either white. Okay, now there can be other flower colors, pero wala na niya gigamit. Ang lang gigamit kay purple o white lang gina siya. Okay, so he also used varieties that were true breeding. When you say true breeding, these are plants that produce offspring of the same variety when they self-pollinate. So, for example, if I have a purple flower here and then gitawag na ko siya nga true breeding, I would expect nga if I self-pollinate it, ang iyang ma-produce of offspring kay purple flower lang yakon siya. Okay? So, muna siya, true breeding. So, in a typical experiment, Mendel mated two contrasting. So, katong ganina, di ba? Nagamit siya og white flower o purple flower. So, mo na gitawag na contrasting. Kilahi man of traits. That's what you call hybridization. Okay? Di ba? In a general sense, when you talk about hybrids, kay mixture, di ba? Of two. So, uh, ang katong mga, katong pinakauna nga plant na iyang gibreed, mo ito ginatawag niya nga parent generation or P generation. And then, ang result da yun sa P generation or the hybrids, we call them F1 generation or first filial generation. Now, Mendel used another F1 generation and then yan na pong cross with another F1 generation. So, ang result between the two, we call that F2 generation or second filial generation. Okay? So, let me try to repeat it again. If you have one parent plant, na true breeding or P generation and then another P generation plant, yung mo silang i-cross, ang outcome ana, gitawag a first filial generation or F1 generation. So, if you obtain another F1 generation, yung mong i-cross with another F1 generation, ang offspring ana or ang result ana or outcome, we call that second filial generation or F2 generation. So, these are the different characters that are used by Mendel no, to study or to go on with his pea plant experiment. So, when you say uh, contrasting characters or traits, contrasting traits, kato lagi, um, 
we have characters here and then na yung mga gitawang uh, contrasting traits. So, doon ragi na siya kabuo. Okay? For example, ang character here is flower color. It's either purple ragi na siya or it's either white lang yun na siya. For example, if the character here is, we are talking about the seed color. So, it's either yellow lang yun na siya or green lang yun na siya. Okay? And then, sa seed shape, it's either round or wrinkled. And then, for pod shape, it's either inflated or constricted. For pod color, it's either green or yellow. For flower position, it's either axial or terminal. And for stem length, it's either tall or dwarf. Okay? And then, he found out in his ratios, if we could go back to the other slide, um, Nata yung mga ginapang tawag na dominant trait or recessive trait. Okay? Later on, you will know what is the difference between the two. So, as you can see, these are the ratios na, na found out ni Mendel no, sa iya P-plot experiment in which we are going to realize this later on when we do the monohybrid cross. Okay, so before we could proceed with the more complex topics or concepts, let's try to first understand important terms used in genetics. Okay, so we have what we call an allele here. When you say allele, it's one of two or more alternative forms of a gene. Now, uh, yeah, it has here two or more. But para dili ta maglibo kay basic pa man siya, let's just use two for this moment. Okay, I mean for this moment. I mean for this um, specific video lecture. So usually alleles are represented by letters. Okay, now when you say dominant trait, these are traits that is uh, that are being expressed. When you say dominant, kibali permiga ka expressed. Okay, mo'y permiga gawas sa isa ka particular generation. So, kabalo na mo ang si F1 generation and F2 generation. Let's proceed to gamit. Kabalo na po mo ani. These are reproductive sex cells. Okay, we have the sperm and the egg. And then when you say genotype, it it refers to the genetic composition of an individual. Usually, genotypes are expressed by letters. Later on, you'll know what's the difference between an allele and a genotype. Okay? Now, when you say heterozygous, these are organisms that have two different alleles for the same trait. Okay? So, when you say two different alleles, kaya di ba I have mentioned earlier, alleles are usually represented by, uh, by letters. So, um, if an allele is composed of a capital letter, which is which denotes a dominant trait, and then a small letter is denoted or denotes recessive trait. Okay? So if an allele consists of a dominant and recessive trait, that's what you call a heterozygous. Okay? So when I say homozygous, it could either be that both of the alleles are dominant or both of the alleles are recessive. That's why identical alleles. So, for example, if one genotype, uh, ang isa ka alil kay capital and then ang another nga alil kay capital, so pareha sila capital tanan, so pasabutan na pareha sila dominant, that's a homozygous uh, one, genotype. Okay? So, when you say, uh, when you say, koan, um, alil with both identical, I mean, when you say an alil na both recessive or both small letters, it's still homozygous. Kay pariya man sila nga small letter. Kay pariya man sila nga recessive. Kay bali. Am I making sense? Sige lang, I'll be showing you illustrations later. So when you say phenotype, these are observable characteristics of an individual. For example, unsa nga gene ang ginacode, unsa nga characteristic kay bali ang ginacode ani nga phenotype, nga genotype rather. So you'll know more about that. And then we have the Punnett square. So it is a diagram used to predict an outcome of a particular cross or breeding experiment. And then of course you have the recessive trait. So compare niyo mo sa dominant, ang recessive trait kay ayara siya ma-express if homozygous siya. Okay, it will never be expressed if heterozygous siya. So it is a trait that is masked in the presence of a dominant trait. As long as na ay dominant trait, the recessive trait would never be expressed unless it is homozygous. Okay. Now, I have a drill here. I would like you to um, identify whether the following is a character or a trait. Okay, so I think you know the difference between the two. I have already explained that earlier. So I'll give you time to, uh, no, you, you can pause this video and then you can uh, write your answers in any sheet of paper. You can use your notepad, you can send your phone, and then we'll reveal the answers later. Okay, so you can pause this and then you can answer. And then after answering, you can, you know, Play the video again. Okay, so 
Yeah, I think you are done answering. Let's try to reveal the answer. Okay. So, balik ta. So, when you say blonde hair, di ba, specific siya. So, that's a trait. Okay. Okay, hairline shape. That's a character. Because there are many types of hairlines, di ba? Na widow's peak, na ikan ng regular lang a hairline shape. You know what I mean. And then number three, gray eyes. That's specific, so that's a trait. And then wrinkled seed shape. That's also a trait. Specific man, wrinkled, na may round, okay? But if you talk only about seed shape, that's a character. Okay, number five, rough fur coat. So, di ba, more specific siya. Okay, rough man, apoy smooth, the texture, or coat texture. So, that's a trait. And then, the last one, seed color. Wala man gingon kung unsang color. Seed color ang managing on. So, that's an example of a character. Good. So, again, I would like you to identify in this next drill whether the following is homozygous dominant, the other one is homozygous recessive, or if it's heterozygous dominant. Okay? So, these are the examples of genotypes. Again, a genotype consists usually of two alleles. Okay? So, one of the alleles, if it's dominant, it's represented by a capital letter. If it's recessive, it's represented by a small letter or lower lowercase letter. So, uh, again, you can pause this video and then after answering, you can um, click play again to reveal the answers. Okay? Now, these are the answers. Okay, now, uh, these are the answers. Okay, let's go back now. Let's try to identify. Number one, so we have big letter D and small letter D. So, we have a dominant allele and then we have a recessive allele. So, that's heterozygous. Okay? Number two, we have both small letter A's. So, pariyaman sila identical kay small letter. So, pasabutan na they are, pareha sila nga small letter, so pasabutan na homozygous siya. But then, small letter man. Diba? Again, basta ganit small letter denotes recessive trait. So, it's homozygous recessive. Okay? Now, number three, it's the opposite. As you can see, these are two capital letter M's or two uppercase letter M's. So, pareha man sila nga uppercase, so that's homozygous. But then, uppercase man, capital. So, that's dominant. So, it's homozygous dominant. Okay? And then, the last one, pariragya po siya sa number one, gibali lang. By the way, take note ha, that's not the proper way on how to write it. Ito yun lang na kung nakayo na para libog-libog sa tugamay. Pero, kabalo ko mga bright man mo. But, again, if there is a dominant alil, always gitunahon ang capital letter, ahi ang small letter. Okay? So, in this case, that's actually a wrong way on how to write a genotype. But, again, the answer is, uh, heterozygous domina. Yeah, uh, my ano is not complete. Let me, <laughs> sorry, edit that. Okay. Now, for the third grill. I want you to identify whether the following is a genotype or a phenotype. So, again, I have explained this earlier. Okay, I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Usually, genotypes are represented by letters, and then phenotypes are like characters or traits. Okay, so you can pause this one, and then you can answer. And then when you are finished, you can uh, click the play again to reveal the answers. Okay, these are the answers. Now, let's go back. Let's try to identify each. So, number one, obviously, these are genotypes. Number This is a genotype. Number two, this is a phenotype. Number three, this is also a phenotype. By the way, do you know what an albino is? It's a skin, uh, it's a skin condition. 
you'll know more about this in my problem sets because I have prepared. I have you'll know more about this in my problem sets because I have prepared problem sets with different kind of mga examples of genetic disorders or kind of mga traits lang and characters. And then of course, obviously, four and five are genotypes. Now let's proceed to the next part of this lesson. We will be talking about probability and genetics. Now, sounds exciting, no? Kaya lang, ma'am, nanong na ay math, ma'am, nanong na ay statistics, okay? So, chill lang, calm down, okay? It's not as hard as you think. Now, when you talk about probability, uh, this is the branch of mathematics that explains the likelihood that a particular event will occur, okay? Now, actually, Mendel is also a mathematician, okay? That's why he was able to use his knowledge on mathematics, uh, specifically on probability, to study his outcomes, gikan sa IMP plant experiment. So, with his knowledge in mathematics, he found out that every time he repeated a particular cross, he obtained similar results. This is what I've been talking earlier. Kato bito mga ratios, betaw. Ito na mga 3 is to 15 is to 1. We will realize more about this as we go through along the le uh, lecture because I've prepared a problem set and then we are going to answer everything together. Okay, we will go through along with it. Go through with it or go along with it rather. Now, um, why are we talking about probability here? Because uh, in the principles of probability, we could actually use, um, uh, you know, we could actually use this branch of mathematics on how to predict outcomes. Okay? So, uh, it says here, no, though the way alleles segregate is completely random because, again, you cannot really predict everything. You cannot uh, really say that everything is um, in a controlled condition. But through probability, you'd be able to draw predictions. Okay, so kibale through probability, may bawaan ni, through the crossing mismo, may bawaan ni mo nga pila ka, ka percentage nga ang outcome or ang itsura sa offspring of the cross would be like this and like that. Okay, so kana, that's the use of probability in the study of genetics. Now, we have the Punnett square experiments. So again, you know this already, uh, the Punnett square is... Um, is a diagram or a tool used by geneticists to predict outcomes of a particular cross. Okay, so in a Punnett square, the gametes, or when I say the genotypes, uh, are written on the outer sides of the square, usually sa top and the left side. Later on, you'll see an example. And the possible gene combinations or the outcomes are represented inside the square. Okay, so again, Capital letters represent the dominant alleles, and then the lowercase letters represent the recessive alleles. So let's proceed to uh, to the monohybrid cross. No, um, this is actually the fun part already. So kita wak siya mono because it's a cross between parents that differ in one trait, one trait raman. Uh, later on, you'll know more about uh, unsa difference sa uh, monohybrid ug sa dihybrid cross uh, on the part on the second part na. I think. Okay, so we have here an example of a Punnett square. So as it was kind of mentioned earlier, ang um, gametes or ang genotypes sa parent offspring, a parent offspring, sa parent uh, generation are written on the outer parts of the square. So on the top part and on the left side. And then inside the square, these are the possible combinations. Kikibali, these are the uh, genotypes of the possible offsprings na maproduce between the cross of these two parent organisms here. Okay? So, each square in the Punnett square signifies a 25% chance of the genotype and the phenotype of the offspring. The results in the Punnett square show that the genotypes and phenotypes are not the same for all offspring. Now, using the concept of probability, no? uh, since in the Punnett square, sa outcome na part or sa possible combination na part sa square, which is kaning upat ka boxes, Diba? In the rules of percentage, of course, we would always, in the rules of percentage, is there such thing as, but anyway, um, in the concept of percentages, diba, uh, we always base it to 100% as the full. So since the, uh, there are four boxes, so we could divide that into, um, we could assume, so since there are four boxes, we could assume na 100 divided by 4 is 25, diba? So we could assume that each box represents 25% of the possible outcome. Okay? Now, we have an example here. 
Suppose yellow flower is dominant. So dominant man siya. So yellow flower is denoted by a capital letter Y. And green flower is recessive daw. Okay? So, uh, na rin, uh, yellow flower is dominant over green. So automatically, si green flower is recessive. And it's represented by small letter Y. And then, two heterozygous plants. So again, when you say heterozygous plants, um, ang iyang genotype kay isa ka capital o isa ka small letter. Okay? So, two heterozygous plants with yellow flower are crossed with each other. What would be the answer to the following questions? Okay? So, question number one, identify the character. So, unsa man ang gisugutan na rin nga character. Okay? Unsa nga general feature. So, that's flower color. Okay? So, when you talk about the traits, what are the specific features? What are the specific varieties or variants of a character? So, di ba, na sa problems at mismo, it's either a yellow flower and green flower. Okay? Now, if we are to identify what are the genotypes of both parents, okay, gingon madari nga heterozygous man daw silang duha. Okay? So, pasabutan na na ay capital letter o na ay small letter. Of course, you could assume na ang duha ka parents, kaya ilang genotypes, kay both of them, kay isa ka capital letter Y, isa ka small letter Y. Kay heterozygous man. Again, di ba, when you talk about heterozygous, na ay capital, na ay small letter. Okay, so these are the genotypes of both parent plants. Now, before we could identify the genotypic ratio and the phenotypic ratio, we have to do the cross first. Okay, so as you can see in this Punnett square, again, di ba, ang genotypes, sa parents are written on the outside part of the box. Sa top and left. Okay? So, sa top, we have big letter Y here. And then, sa second na part, kay we have the small letter Y. Okay, di ba? Mubayan niyang genotype baya sa both parents. It's the same thing that goes here on the left side. Okay, mo magya po ng genotype sa other parent plan. By the way, we cannot really identify kung ginsa ang babae yung lalaki dar in this case. Kay mga tanong man siya. But, Later on, in some of in most of my drills and activities, we will be using um, examples like animals and humans. Okay, okay. Excuse me, so that you could identify as ang male as ang female. It's already indicated in the problem sets. So now, what do we do? Imo lang combine ang mga genotypes niya here in the boxes that would predict the outcomes. Okay. So kanisha big letter Y and then si big letter Y daring aside. Imo lang combine so you have two big letter Ys. And then, i-combine mo kaninga part o kaninga part. So, we have big Y and small letter Y. And then, we have this part here. As you can see in my cursor. And then, this part here. Pag i na silang i-combine, we have this combination or outcome here. So, big letter Y and small letter Y. And then, the last one, we have the small letter Y. And then, small letter Y here. Pag i na silang i-combine, this is the result. So, now, let's identify the phenotype. Okay? So, in this case, duha ka big letter Y. Kung sa ganig signify sa big letter Y, di ba, yellow flower. So, that's why we have yellow flower here. Now, in this case, na ay big letter Y, na ay small letter Y. Wag mo i-combine. But again, di ba, in the rules or in the laws of dominance, according to Gregor Mendel, if na gani dominant nga allele sa isa ka genotype, automatic, ang dominant trait lang gid ang imo ma-express. In this problem set, di ba, ang giingon nga dominant trait here is ang yellow flower. So, automatically, that's yellow. Okay? It's the same thing here. Na big letter Y and then na small letter Y. That's yellow. And then, of course, the last part, kani small letter Ys, kay di ba, si green flower daw is recessive over yellow flower. Okay? So, muna siya. Automatically, that's green. Now, there is no such thing as heterozygous recessive. Again, take note, heterozygous na ay capital of small letter, but it, you cannot identify its recessive. Okay, ay hara ma-express ang recessive if both small letter... <laughs> sorry. Ay hara ni mo siya ma-identify ng recessive if homozygous siya. Sa so, binisaya pa na nga term, if both siya small letters. Because again, small letters denote recessive alleles. Okay? So now, when you say genotypic ratio, pila ka book ka in one aning a genotype. Pila kabok ngayon ani nga genotype. Pila kabok ngayon ani nga genotype. So, that's why we have one nga homozygous dominant. So, big Y, big Y is two. Pila kabok ka heterozygous dominant. So, duhagi po, di ba? So, two heterozygous dominant is to one homozygous recessive. Okay? Or, the ratio is one is to two is to one. 
And then, when you talk about the phenotypic ratio, I'm sorry about this. I haven't, I didn't, I haven't checked. <laughs> oh my God, I haven't corrected. Okay, when you talk about um, phenotypic ratio, dili ang genotype ang imong basihan, ang phenotype. Kung unsa siya nga character or trait. So in this case, pila ka book yellow? Tolo ka book, di ba? So that's why three yellow is to one green flower. So hence, the phenotypic ratio is three is to one. Okay? Now, if I were to ask you, what is the probability of the two plants to produce a green flower? So, di ba, ang atong, akong dimension ganina nga, each box represents 25%. Okay? So, pila man ka percent. Pila man ka buka green, dari. Isa lang, di ba? So, times 25, that's 25%, di ba? So, out of uh, all the outcomes, out of four possible outcomes, only 25% ang chance na makaproduce sila o green flower. Okay? Now, if I were to ask you, what is the probability of the two plants to produce a yellow plant or an offspring with yellow flower? Okay? So, pila man, pila man, pila man ka buka yellow sa boxes or sa box, punnet square rather. There are three times 25, so that's 75. So, there is a probability that the two plants would produce, that the two plants would there is a uh, 75% that the two plants would produce um, yellow flower plants. Okay? So that's the concept of the monohybrid cross. Yeah, so I think we are done. So, um, yeah. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll be providing more examples during your synchronous uh, online lesson. Okay? So, if you don't have, if you have any uh, kind of confusions or na inay part na libog ka ayo pa, you can watch the video again or you can ask, you can list down these questions and then you can raise it to me during our synchronous sessions. Okay? So, thank you so much and I'll see you again on the next video. Bye guys!